Biodiversity Conservation Society. We're newly set up just last October and basically what we're trying to do is promote conservation to people doing the outdoor courses and even people not doing outdoor courses. Hopefully just get some sort of practical skills out of the field. Okay, well this is the um, stand for the um, library here at the university. Um, just wanted to show that we've got environmentally themed books in pretty well every subject that we do. So rather than having just um, one environmental area, we've got books to do with every single sort of course really. That uh, you know, we've got green travel, green kitchen, things about climate, things about biodiversity, um, things about eating locally. Lots of different things. Even the Green Beauty Bible, where sort of you know people can sort of people doing beauty courses. There's natural beauty. Um, yeah, so any colour you like, as long as it's green, that's what we're doing. I've got the rally chopper here to represent the fun side of cycling, uh, and I've got my own racing bike there that I've used over the years for racing. Uh, obviously, I don't need to speak about the values of cycling and the, econ the economy and the environment. What I will point out that both, the, both these bikes are quite old bikes now uh, and I believe they've got a very low carbon footprint because once these have been manufactured we use them for years and years. I've got a few photographs representing tandem racing over the years right from myself as a schoolboy through to a couple of friends of mine that are ones in his late 80s and still racing so it shows that cycling's available for all ages. What else is good about it? Extremely low emissions. <laughs> oh, when it comes down to fuel economy, I wouldn't say that one there is very economical because if I'm racing a Sunday morning event, I usually eat about six shredded wheat first thing in the morning to give me enough energy to ride it. But that will sustain me up to 100 miles in a time trial, so I suppose it is quite economical. So the Soil Association are an organic licensing body, um, but I'm actually here today to talk about a scheme called the Food for Life Catering Mark. So our certification um, office basically run a scheme which is open to any caterers um, or um, outlets such as universities, hospitals, schools, who provide um, a meal uh, provision to their students or staff. So Derby University have just applied for the catering mark and they've applied for the bronze award, which means that their meals that are served on campus are freshly prepared, free from undesirable additives and trans fats, free from any GM ingredients, um, and they're also better for animal welfare, um, support to local communities and um, the use of seasonal vegetables, and also um, that the meals um, are freshly prepared from scratch. We're from High Peak Borough Council, we're the local collection authority in High Peak and we're here today to promote the services that the council offers to residents, so things that you can recycle at the curbside. Um, we have a few things here for residents as well, the bags to recycle the textiles in and also the food paddies, so if residents have got any food waste to be recycled, so the peelings, the tea bags, these caddies could be kept in the kitchen on a work surface collect the food waste and then empty them into the green bin for recycling on collection day. Okay, I'm Lynn Richards, the Environmental Manager for the University of Derby. Today we've come to engage staff and students in the work that we do for the university in terms of energy, water, waste management, biodiversity. Um, so these are recycled plastic mugs and water bottles um, and then we've come to talk about saving energy and then we have lots of recipes about reducing food waste, so only cooking the amount of food that you need when things come to the sell-by dates then making the most of the food that you have. So it's mainly focusing on food waste in particular? Uh, yes, that section is at the moment, but we're here in our booklet we talk about waste and recycling policies for the university. Our current recycling rate is about 75% for our tutorial sites, so we're, we're quite good at the moment, but obviously every little bit helps at home and at the university. Okay, um, so we're from Global Action Plan and we're an environmental charity. We've been going for about 19 years and we're trying to effect behavioural change in people to reduce their environmental impact. So what we're trying to do is by very quite easy step changes in everyone's life cycle to show that people can make changes that can actually reduce their environmental impact. So here we have the Water Explorer. It's basically a quiz and there are three options. You can look at uh, your own personal water use. Uh, you can look at the embodied water 
that's included in all products and services. Or you can look at global water use, what different countries use different amounts of water. Um, and that's very engaging, and so we try to be very interactive. So we call these eco-interactives. We also have over here the energy bike. And this produces electricity and shows how different appliances require different amounts of electricity. So right from a low energy bulb, going right up to something like a, a kettle that uses 3,000 watts. So what actually happens is you feel the resistance and the amount of energy that's required to power certain appliances. And on the poster here, you can see Albi adjusting the equipment. Albi is one of our uh, most experienced ambassadors. <laughs> um, and you can see on the poster here that different appliances use different amounts of, uh, of power, so different wattages. Okay. So it's, get, it's getting across that when you flick the switch, you're actually using power that requires energy that does have an environmental impact. Okay. We also have an iPod, a very um, low energy appliance going up to uh, like a normal computer monitor that probably uses about 10 watts. So a lot of the appliances we have now are quite low energy, but we have more and more of them. Right. Um, so actually using things in an energy efficient way is becoming more and more important. Yeah. I mean, that's the balance, these are the decisions we have to make all the time. Um, and with a kettle, obviously if you fill the kettle to the very top, it's going to take a lot longer. And if you're only making one cup of tea, we say just fill the kettle for the amount of water that you need. Because right. that obviously has energy implications. But right. Anything that uses electricity to heat uh, is not a particularly energy efficient way of, of using energy. So electrical um, heaters, not the best way. Two to three thousand watts, up to three kilowatts. So, so better to heat with gas in that case. Uh, gas is often better, yeah. But there are a lot. There are other ways of heating now. We can use underfloor heating. Um, we can use geothermal heating. We can use air source and ground source heat pumps. So technology is changing all the time. The transition town movement is about going from a high oil, high carbon way of living to a much lower oil, low carbon way of life. Because obviously oil is becoming much more expensive as it becomes scarcer and therefore we need to adapt and use less. But also we want to reduce in particular the carbon dioxide emissions which are causing climate change and obviously all sorts of problems that follow on from that. And so there are all sorts of aspects to reducing um, our use of oil and lowering our use of carbon. The one we are particularly working on I guess at the moment is growing food locally which means you don't have to import it, you don't have to use expensive fertilizers if you develop organic and permaculture methods of growing food. So we're encouraging more allotments, people growing in their own, people growing food in, in, the, in their own gardens, um, food buying schemes, so we can buy organic food locally. But there are also lots of other aspects that we're looking at. Um, for instance, getting people onto bikes and buses rather than using cars, or of course, and walking, uh, for transport, which is very important, and insulating houses so that we use less energy for um, space heating and water heating in houses. And by good insulation, you can dramatically reduce, of course, the amount of energy that you use, and again, reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that you're emitting. Um, the other aspects, of course, are even generating your own energy, um, which is a bit ambitious. Um, we'd like to see some wind turbines, perhaps, on some of the hills around Baxton. So there are lots of different ways that people can get involved and develop their own particular enthusiasms. But overall, the idea is a transition from a sort of a wasteful, expensive way of life to a much more economical, environmentally friendly, way of life, reducing um, the, the amount of resources that we're using, reusing, recycling, all this sort of thing is also very much part of it. The 
It's a game that we designed a few years ago for Transition Buxton specifically, and it's based on Buxton. And it's sort of like Monopoly, but it isn't. So we've got this, this big board, and the idea is that you move around from place to place following a throw of the dice, as you would with most board games. But you can go any direction you want, and when you land on a square, you get the chance to invest in some sort of green environmental improvement in that area. So you might be able to invest in solar panels or insulation on the houses, or it might be a position where you've got the chance to buy a bus company or plant an orchard. Lots and lots of improvements that you can do to the town. The beauty of it is that it costs you money to invest, but you get an instant return on that investment. So you hand your money over to the bank, they give you your orchard or your bus company or wind turbine, whatever it is, but they also give you a load more money that you can then invest in elsewhere, which of course is, is sort of true to life because once you've got an asset, the banks will lend you more money against that asset. It, in essence, it's a simulation of what we could do in Buxton if we wanted to. So all the street names are based on real streets in Buxton in, in their areas. And it takes all the different sorts of things that we could do as a community or as individuals, from growing food in allotments and planting orchards around the town, right through to insulating our houses and putting solar panels on the roofs, through having a city bike scheme, having an electric bus scheme, having a, a combined heat and power station somewhere in the centre, having wind turbines up on the surrounding hills. So it goes through all these different sort of options of what we could do. Obviously, Having an allotment doesn't cost very much money at all. Putting up a wind turbine or developing a solar uh, combined heat and power scheme um, is much, much more expensive. So what happens is people start off with a certain amount of money with which they can't actually do very much. They can insulate their houses, they can maybe put some solar panels up and they can plant orchards and allotments and things, but they wouldn't be able to do any more than that with their starting capital. And every single one of these investments works that way right up to the most expensive thing, which is the biomass combined heat and power plant, which will cost you 50,000. Now, in that case, you only get 75,000 back because a biomass plant doesn't give you a very quick rate of return. It's going to be at least five years before you start paying back your capital. And it also doesn't give you a huge rate, whereas something like a, an allotment, you get a very, very quick rate. You get a return in the very first year. An orchard takes a little bit longer at four years. So there is a rationale, and the, different, the rates of return you get for your different types of investment vary according to real data on how long it would take you to actually um, regain your capital investment. So what actually happens is lots of people play they all land on different squares, they all land on, invest in different things, and by the end of a game, not only is Buxton completely greened through and through, but everybody is filthy rich. So everybody likes the game. <laughs>